keratoplasty let's quickly look at the two different types of keratoplasty the first one is penetrating keratoplasty the second one is lamellar keratoplasty by just looking at these words you can easily remember penetrating you can think that it is going fully deep okay fully deep means it is penetrating completely so by this I imply there is a full thickness keratoplasty. The entire thickness of the cornea is removed from the uh, donor and placed onto the recipient's eye. However, lamellar, the word lamellar means layers. Okay, that's the meaning of the word lamella. So different layers, only selected layers of the cornea or you can put it as partial thickness of the cornea is transplanted. It's a partial thickness keratoplasty. So by partial thickness, we can understand that only the outer layers are removed from the donor and placed onto the recipient's eye. Let's look at what are these layers. Now the recipient, that is the person who is receiving the transplant of cornea, retains his endothelium, the decimates membrane and he may or may not retain the stroma depending on the indication for the keratoplasty, he does retain his endothelium and decimates membrane. And the donor provides his outermost layers, those are the epithelium, the Bowman's membrane and plus or minus the stroma depending on the uh, what the layers are present in the uh, recipient. Okay, now this is the picture showing uh, penetrating keratoplasty and lamellar keratoplasty. As you can see in the first picture, the entire corneal thickness is removed and uh, a donor's cornea is placed. However, if you look at this picture, only this many layers are removed and the underlying layer remains. That is lamellar keratoplasty. Now that we have understood what is keratoplasty, let's learn where the donor cornea comes from and what is this procedure of corneal transplantation. Now, corneal transplantation, you must know this, that it is the most successful organ transplantation in the human body. Because cornea is avascular. Once it is avascular, there is no issue of HLA typing and no rejection as well. Right, you can understand this easily. So, there is very low rejection rate. Hence, it is the most successful type of organ transplantation in the human body. However, lamellar keratoplasty is more successful when compared to penetrating keratoplasty because why I will tell you this because whatever the amount of rejection is present even in corneal transplants, it comes from the endothelium and not from the other layers. So in lamellar keratoplasty, what you're doing is the uh, recipient is retaining his uh, endothelium we have discussed just now. So because it is his own endothelium, there will be no rejection. So the lamellar keratoplasty is more successful as compared to penetrating keratoplasty. However, the uh, drawback of this is that it requires a lot of practice. You know, the learning curve is very high for this and uh, it is a technically more demanding procedure. Now, what are the indications for penetrating keratoplasty? The first one is pseudophagic bullous keratopathy. Worldwide, if uh, see um, note in your question if they are asking whether it is most common worldwide or in India if they say most common indication worldwide it is pseudophagic bullous keratopathy what is this condition the the word looks very big and confusing but it's very simple see pseudophagic means you understand that the patient has an IOL that is intraocular lens he has undergone a cataract surgery bullous means there are some bullets Okay, now let's uh, imagine this is a cornea of a patient who has undergone cataract surgery and this is his IOL over here. Okay, uh, so what happens is when uh, the surgeon is introducing the IOL into the um, posterior uh, capsule, uh, he can sometimes touch the endothelial layer of the 
cornea with this IOL. It may be because of inexperience or anything, any issue. Because there are too many surgeries being conducted, it's possible and it is human error to cause such an issue. And when it rubs off the corneal endothelium, it regenerates and forms as, we have seen the endothelium doesn't regenerate. So it forms bubbles or vesicles or bullae like this. This condition is nothing but your pseudophagic bullous keratopathy. We know that because the endothelium does not regenerate, we have to do a keratoplasty that will be full thickness because you have to remove even the last layer of cornea. Okay, that is simple to understand. Now, your second indication is non-healing ulcer. Then corneal scar, this is the most common indication in India. In India, most common indication for PK is a corneal scar. Then corneal dystrophies, then keratoconus, it is the most common indication in the US and chemical injuries when the cornea is irreversibly damaged. Now, let's look at these two pictures over here. There can be two types of sutures depending on the surgeon's preference. It can be either continuous sutures or interrupted sutures. See, these the continuous sutures are appearing like this all around the cornea. Okay. Uh, the interrupted sutures are equidistantly placed and away from each other. Why do they use two different types is that this type of continuous sutures are known to cause some amount of astigmatism but interrupted sutures cause much less uh, corneal astigmatism after keratoplasty. Okay, let's look at corneal donation. We all know that a live person cannot donate cornea because both the corneas are required for binocular vision. So you can donate it only once after the body uh, is deceased, the patient is deceased. Okay, the procedure for, is it, for this is that the patient is to pledge his cornea before the death and then sign a consent that he is willing to donate his corneas after his death. And you have to inform the spouse that uh, this pledge has been taken. The patient needs to inform the spouse that he has pledged, he or she has pledged their corneas and they need to make sure that these corneas are donated. Last year only 60,000 corneas were collected all over India whereas the requirement was 3 to 3.5 lakh corneas. See there's so much of gap between the demand and the provision of corneal uh, um, transplants. So I will insist and request all of you to pledge your corneas and so have I. I have also pledged my cornea. Please do pledge so that you can save someone's vision. Okay, coming back to our topic. We have seen that HLA matching is not required because the rejection rate is very low and an important point to remember over here is you should donate the cornea within 6 hours of death because after that it starts degenerate, uh, de uh, degenerating. So within 6 hours the corneal donation team needs to be informed and they will come and collect the eyeball. After it's collected it is preserved in this famous medium called the MK medium or the McCary Kaufman medium. This helps in preserving the eyeball and the cornea for 96 hours. Okay, This can be asked as a question. The medium used to preserve corneal transplants uh, is McCary Kaufman medium. Okay. Now, we require so many corneas, we can take it from whoever wants to donate. However, there are certain absolute contraindications uh, because certain diseases spread to the recipient from the donor via the cornea as well. They are HIV, hepatitis B, septicemia, rabies, prions, retinoblastoma, cause through seeding it can spread into the uh, recipient, um, then metastatic brain tumor, leukemias, lymphomas and head and neck cancers and another point unknown cause of death. When the cause of death is not known of the donor, such corneas are not preferred for donation. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sai Suguna, your mentor for ophthalmology at Medico App. Now, thanks for watching the video. Now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app. The trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below.